que, assim, todos desligassem o microfone e a câmera, não? Para evitar qualquer problema de conexão. Reza, agora você pode fazer a apresentação. Beleza. É, muito obrigado, Ramon. É, boa tarde a todos. É, como que o professor Ramon falou, a gente voltou para a nossa nova série de colóquios. E hoje vamos ter a, a professora a doutora Leila Separdá é, como convidado, convidada nossa. É, a doutora Leila, é, ela tem o doutorado na física pela Universidade de Chiras, no Irã. Ela foi também um pesquisador visitante na Dinamarca. Ela também é, atualmente atua como professora numa universidade no Irã, que chama Azad University, é, no, no Tirã, né, no Irã. É, na verdade, hoje em dia, ela é um pesquisador, um pós-doutorada na Universidade Federal de São Carlos, lá no Departamento de Física. Ela trabalha com... É, grandes nomes que, que já é, a gente divulgou várias vezes no nosso programa de pós-graduação, né? É, como a Bolsa de FAPESP, é, trabalha na área de vidros e é, agora eu só vou apresentar rapidinho é, a professora Leila em inglês e vou passar o microfone para ela, beleza? Então, é, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, Professor Dr. Leila Separdar, uh, she's an Iranian uh, scientist. Uh, actually, she got here. She got her PhD from the University of Shiraz in Iran, and she was a visiting professor uh, in Denmark in the University of uh, Hoskate. And uh, actually, she's a professor in in physics in university in Azad University in Iran. And uh, right now, she's doing a, a, a postdoctoral uh, a fellow in the Federal University of Sao Carlos and uh, with, the, uh, with the research group in the Department of Physics at that university. And uh, today, we are very happy uh, to have you in our colloquium, uh, Professor Leila, and uh, we are here Uh, to know about your uh, research area and we are happy to have you uh, as a invited speaker uh, you can you can start uh, first of all i would like to thank um, dr Dusi for inviting me uh, to share some of my recent findings uh, about uh, relaxation and uh, crystal nucleation, the super-cooled zinc selenite, and uh, I hope it uh, could be useful for all the students who are interested in this uh, subject of uh, physics. And uh, uh, the basic outline of uh, my uh, research project uh, is as a follow. And, uh, Uh, I mean, the basic outline of my talk is as a uh, follow. First uh, of all, uh, I will uh, describe the supercooled liquid and what is the supercooled liquid and uh, what is the ultimate uh, fate of uh, each supercooled liquid. And uh, after that, I will uh, review the classical nucleation uh, theory and um, uh, then I will. Uh, explain how one can uh, calculate the nucleation rate uh, by using the seeding method at a shallow supercooling and also by mean lifetime method at deep supercooling. And after that, I will um, uh, end my talk with a conclusion. The liquid to crystal and crystal to liquid transition is a first or the first transition that is very important in uh, nature and also in industry. For most substances, the melting and uh, freezing point are equal. For example, in mercury, 
uh, but in some uh, certain materials, the melting and freezing point uh, are not equal. For example, uh, in water, zinc, selenide, germanium. Uh, here I have a uh, plot that uh, shows the temperature dependence of potential energy for zinc, selenide, uh, the uh, material that uh, I have simulated and I want to uh, speak about uh, the new, uh, nucleation and crystallization and the relaxation mechanism in this specific material. Uh, if uh, we could, uh, if we hit uh, zinc selenide, crystal zinc selenide, at some certain uh, temperature, uh, the crystal uh, change to the liquid and a sudden jump appears in the potential energy. Uh, but if uh, we cool down the liquid, it does not go back to the super cool, uh, to the uh, crystal uh, phase uh, at the same temperature and a hysteresis occurs in its freezing point. Uh, and the liquid zinc selenide enters to a metastable phase, which is called the supercooled uh, liquid, supercooled phase. This phase is unstable and, uh, and uh, liquid cannot stay in this phase for a long time. And, uh, to, uh, this, uh, and uh, the liquid, the supercooled liquid, must choose to crystallize or vitrify during the cooling pass. Uh, which destination the liquid uh, will choose totally depend on its uh, cooling rate. If we cool down liquid rapidly below its melting uh, point, uh, it becomes more viscous, and uh, with decreasing temperature it eventually falls uh, out of equilibrium and enters to the glassy state, which is uh, shown by a uh, red line. And um, this glassy state is a non-equilibrium state, uh, but if uh, we cool down uh, supercooled liquid very slowly, uh, as a result of thermal fluctuations, a small theoretical cluster nucleus may be formed within the bulk supercooled liquid and, uh, uh, um, and um, cause the uh, crystallization in the supercooled liquid. For, uh, to know uh, better the uh, relaxation, the uh, atomistic dynamics of supercooled liquid, uh, we uh, must determine two characteristic time scale, uh, the nucleation time and the um, uh, structural relaxation time. Uh, if nucleation time be lower than uh, structural relaxation, uh, uh, then the supercooled liquid, the ultimate fate uh, of supercooled liquid will be crystallization. But if nucleation rate, uh, rate be, uh, uh, sorry, if uh, the nucleation time be more than the uh, relax, structural relaxation time, uh, then the supercooled liquid will uh, vitrify. Uh, another uh, possibility is uh, that um, is that it uh, the supercooled li uh, liquid the supercooled liquid uh, uh, enters to a region enters to a state uh, that uh, the, uh, if uh, sorry <laughs> if uh, the liquid supercooled liquid uh, not uh, crystallized nor vitrifies uh, then uh, a possible uh, situation which uh, may occur for it uh, for it is that it uh, enters to a region uh, that uh, uh, that uh, predicted by Cosman and uh, at which the difference between the entropy of the supercooled liquid uh, and its uh, chemical crystal uh, vanishes. The temperature at which uh, the excess entropy, it means the difference between the entropy of supercooled liquid and uh, crystal uh, becomes zero is called the Cosman temperature. Uh, so uh, if uh, the supercooled liquid, not crystal, nor vitrifies, then it uh, will go to a temperature that is called the uh, uh, Cosman temperature. 
Uh, now I will uh, explain you how I have calculated the nucleation uh, time and relax structural uh, relaxation time for supercooled uh, zinc selenide. Uh, the supercooled zinc selenide uh, shows a spontaneous nucleation uh, during the cooling pass. Uh, in this figure, you can see the atomistic configuration uh, of the, uh, as a function of uh, time uh, for three temperatures and uh, five uh, times. Uh, the common liver analysis um, shows that, uh, the, uh, shows the beginning of crystal nucleation and its growth. You can see that for temperature 1000, the uh, nuclei uh, um, appears at a uh, at time 616 pic, uh, picosecond and then uh, start to grow. This uh, time, uh, this nucleation time uh, decreases by uh, decreasing the temperature. And, uh, and because the spontaneous nucleation is a, a random stochastic process, uh, so to have a reliable uh, statistic, uh, I have simulated uh, the spontaneous nucleation at each temperature for 15 independent samples, and I have averaged the nucleation time due, uh, for these 15 uh, 15 independent samples. And uh, in this figure, you can see the uh, nucleation time uh, ca uh, calculated for two uh, different system sizes. One of them uh, has 17,000 atoms, and the other one has 32,000 atoms. Uh, and they are uh, shown by uh, blue and uh, green circles. Uh, I have also calculated the um, a structural relaxation time by calculating the intermediate scattering function and fitting uh, it uh, with a Kolrosh William Watts uh, uh, equation according to this equation. And uh, uh, fr uh, from this fit, the beta and uh, tau, uh, which are the fitting parameter, can be determined. And from these two uh, parameters, uh, one can uh, find the average relaxation uh, time according to this relation. Here, gamma is the gamma function. And uh, uh, the black uh, triangles here in this figure shows the uh, tau r, uh, and you can see that by decreasing the temperature, uh, this uh, time scale increases. And at a temperature uh, that is, uh, and at a temperature which is equal to 819 Kelvin, uh, the uh, the structural relaxation time uh, across the nucleation time. This uh, temperature is called the kinetic spinodal temperature. And uh, below this temperature, the supercooled liquid will uh, crystallize and uh, uh, will uh, crystallize it. Uh, I, uh, in this figure, you can also see the uh, tau eta, the relaxation time that uh, I have calculated from viscosity according to Maxwell equation. Uh, the Maxwell equation is two equal to uh, eta over g infinity. The g infinity is the um, uh, infinity shear modulus of the uh, crystal zinc selenide. And, um, why I have um, um, I have calculated this uh, parameter is that uh, in most uh, uh, experimental works, it is often assumed that the structural relaxation is uh, controlled by uh, viscosity, and uh, in uh, those um, experimental uh, works, they have used uh, viscosity for calculating the structural relaxation. But here, uh, when we calculate the tau from uh, viscosity, we saw that uh, this uh, time that are shown by uh, um, violet uh, circles, um, 
is lower than the uh, tau r calculated from intermediate scattering function for all the supercooling region. Also, when we use uh, this uh, the viscosity, you cannot uh, see the uh, kinetic spinodal temperature, and we cannot see that the curve uh, of uh, the uh, violet curve across the uh, uh, green and blue curve, the nucleation time. Um, and uh, the crystallization and spontaneous nucleation that we have observed in the simulation cannot be uh, explained uh, and described by using the uh, viscosity. So, uh, maybe it is uh, not a good idea to use viscosity uh, to uh, find the relaxation time uh, in, in materials. Also, uh, we, uh, I have uh, calculated the Cosman temperature to see uh, what is um, uh, to see what is the uh, relation between uh, Cosman temperature and kinetic spinodal temperature. And uh, I want to compare uh, these two temperature with each other. Uh, to calculate the Cosman temperature, uh, I have uh, first calculate this um, uh, excess entropy at uh, some uh, points, uh, at some temperature in the supercooling region. The excess entropy, I told, uh, is the difference between the entropy of liquid and its isothermal crystal. Here, delta Hm is the um, entropy, uh, is the difference between the entropy of the liquid and crystal at melting point. Tm is melting point, and delta Cp is the specific heat, constant uh, pressure, a specific heat at temperature to prime. And uh, the HCI is the ontology of any polymorphic crystal phase uh, transformation which might uh, occur during the cooling path of the supercooled liquid. In the case of zinc selenide, we didn't see such a uh, polymorphic uh, transformation, so this uh, term is zero. Uh, and after we calculated the uh, excess entropy uh, at uh, some point, we have extrapolated it to, the, to uh, find the temperature the Cosman temperature. It means the temperature at which the excess entropy um, becomes zero. This temperature is about 613 Kelvin. If we go back to this uh, uh, figure, we can see that the Cosman temperature is a very lower than the uh, kinetic spinodal temperature. So, in the case of zinc selenide, uh, before, uh, re um, uh, before reaching to temperature that the Cosman paradox uh, happens, uh, the uh, supercooled liquid it crystallizes. And uh, we couldn't uh, see such paradox, um, such Cosman paradox in zinc selenide. And, uh, now I want uh, to have a review about the classical nucleation theory. The classical nucleation theory is one of the best theories to describe the kinetic of homogeneous nucleation in supercooled liquids up to now. According to this uh, theory, the formation of uh, the formation of um, critical nucleus requires the surmounting uh, of the free energy barrier, free energy barriers, delta Gn. Uh, after that, the crystal nuclei can grow. Uh, if uh, uh, in the uh, three dimensions, uh, if uh, we assume that the critical nuclei is a spherical, this free energy barrier can be uh, written as a sum of uh, surface uh, uh, term and uh, volume term. Here, gamma is the liquid crystal interfacial free energy. A is the area of the uh, critical nucleus. Uh, and N is the number of atoms inside the uh, crystal nuclei, and delta mu is the difference between the chemical potential of liquid and uh, the uh, crystalline uh, cluster. Uh, 
And uh, if uh, this free energy uh, uh, spread as a function of N, it displays a maximum uh, at a point corresponding to the uh, so-called critical nucleus size N star. It means the delta G has a maximum at uh, N star, which is the critical uh, nucleus size. And uh, the um, value of the uh, delta G at this point is equal to N star delta mu over uh, 2. And the size uh, of uh, the critical nuclei can be related to the interfacial free energy, the solid density, and the delta mu according to this uh, relation. And uh, every crystalline nucleus, lucky enough to overcome the critical size and star, quickly grows to microscopic dimension on a time scale much smaller than the long time required for uh, that fortunate fluctuation to come about. If these conditions uh, are met, the nucleation rate uh, that is the nucleation rate J, that is the probability per unit time, per unit volume of forming a critical nucleus uh, does not uh, depend on the time and is uh, called a steady state nucleation rate and can be written as a product of three terms. The first one is the Lubitsch factor, which is related uh, to delta mu, T temperature and N star according to this relation. KV here is Boltzmann constant. And uh, the D plus is the attachment rate of the atoms from liquid to the uh, critical cluster. And rho F expon uh, exponential term is the number density of critical cluster. And here also in this uh, figure, uh, um, you can compare the uh, free energy barrier in three different uh, situations that cause the crystallization. In homogeneous nucleation, you can see that the uh, height of this barrier is, uh, is larger than the heterogeneous nucleation. And uh, what is the heterogeneous nucleation if nucleation occurs as a result of uh, existence of impurities uh, inside the uh, supercoat liquid, then uh, it uh, will call the heterogeneous nucleation. The nuclei that appears uh, due to the impurities is called the heterogeneous nucleation. In the case of a binodal uh, temperature, the supercoat liquid divided to the different region with different uh, crystalline region with different uh, structure. And uh, you can say, uh, see that the spinodal decomposition, in the case of spinodal decomposition, the uh, green energy barrier is zero and supercoat liquid uh, spontaneously enters to the crystalline uh, phase. But um, the most uh, challenging part uh, of classical nucleation theory uh, is the independent determination of three key parameters. What is this uh, three key parameters? The gamma, N star, and D plus. And because there is no direct way to, uh, to measure these three parameters, uh, experimentally and uh, independently, uh, often the validity and accuracy of classical nucleation um, totally go into uh, question. Um, and also, there are some uh, difficulties uh, for uh, measuring the uh, steady state nucleation rate experimentally. For example, uh, in the shallow supercooling uh, or in moderate supercooling, I mean this uh, region, here is the shallow supercooling. Uh, in this region, determining uh, the nucleation rate uh, is very difficult. Let me it's very difficult because we need a very big uh, critical nucleus size and it takes a long time um, uh, that uh, this uh, critical nuclei could uh, uh, form inside the supercoat liquid. And in um, 
deep supercoolings, uh, we need a uh, very small, uh, critical states are very uh, small, uh, has very small size, and uh, its uh, lifetime is very short. And it uh, makes it difficult to, uh, to measure the uh, steady state nucleation rate. In this situation, computer simulation help us to overcome this limitation. For example, there are some methods such as enhanced sampling methods, seeding methods, and mean lifetime methods that help us to calculate the J in different supercooling regions. For example, in uh, recent, uh, in, in the last few years, uh, the seeding method has been used uh, to calculate the J, uh, the, uh, uh, the nucleation rate in shallow supercooling. In this uh, method, uh, we insert uh, artificially a seed inside the supercooled liquid and then uh, see what happened uh, for that seed. If the cluster or the seed is larger than the critical size at the study temperature, it will tend to grow. Whereas uh, the subcritical nuclei dissolve in uh, dissolve. Uh, to, and um, here in this video, I will explain you how uh, one can prepare an amorphous matrix which contains a crystalline nuclei. Um, and first of all, we have to prepare a super cell which contains uh, uh, which contains a lot of atoms. For example, thousands of atoms. Uh, here, uh, this simulation box contains seventeen thousand atoms. Uh, we start from a uh, crystal, zinc selenide, and let me play this video. Uh, I have started from a, a crystal uh, and then I hit the crystal to, for, uh, to have a hot crystal um, at a temperature 1000 and after that at the geometrical center of the uh, simulation box I have defined a, a spherical region uh, and uh, after um, a spherical region with a, a given uh, radius. For example, here the radius is 13 angstrom. And uh, after that, the uh, atoms around the seed uh, are heated up uh, uh, about the melting point to liquefy. And then the uh, and then it uh, again cooled down to the supercooling temperature. To the supercooled temperature here, you can see that uh, the crystal liquefy and then its temperature again um, decreases until the uh, atoms around the seed uh, enters to the supercooled liquid uh, supercooled region. But during this heating and cooling process, the atoms inside the uh, spherical region must be kept constant at their position. Okay, after that, we uh, have to uh, find the temperature at which uh, this seed starts uh, to grow. Uh, it means the seed and supercooled uh, liquid around it uh, be at equilibrium uh, no, and the seed not uh, grows nor dissolve. Here, uh, for a radius 13, for a seed with radius 13 angstrom, the uh, coexistence temperature, the temperature at which the seed not grows, not dissolve, is uh, 1235 Kelvin. Uh, in one video, this video, you can see how the seed grows, and the, in the another, I will show you that uh, the seed uh, dissolve. Here, in this uh, video, You can see the seed grows, but in this one, we have to wait.
problems. continue in this uh, you know the state is solved totally but because the equilibrium between the state and uh, the super cool liquid around it uh, was unstable uh, I have prepared uh, 15 uh, for each uh, seed size, I have prepared 15 independent samples with the same uh, nucleus size and the uh, temperature at which um, 8 uh, or 7 of the 15 independent configuration in the 8 or 7 of them, the seed grows and uh, fully dissolves in remain configuration. That temperature uh, is um, uh, and kept as a uh, coexistence temperature. Uh, we also can uh, see um, uh, also another best uh, criteria to see the seed uh, grows or dissolve is uh, look at the potential energy uh, as a time uh, as a function of time. If um, uh, the, uh, if uh, the potential energy after inserting the seed uh, increase or it remains constant, it means that the seed dissolves. But if potential energy decreases, it means that the seed is increasing. And uh, during this time interval that the seed uh, uh, grows, uh, we, um, uh, we identify the solid-like particles around, uh, in the seed environment uh, by calculating the Ashton Hart bond ordering parameter according to this relation. Here, Q6 is related to the spherical harmonic according to this relation, and NAB uh, is the uh, number of uh, atoms uh, around the atom uh, oil is the uh, neighbor, uh, uh, is the number of nearest neighbor of atom around the atom oil. If the uh, this dot product be more than zero five, then the uh, particle particle association uh, is considered as solid light. And from the uh, time evolution of the number of particles. Uh, inside the seed, uh, according to this relation, we can find the attachment rate of particle from liquid to the uh, seed um, uh, to the seed environment. And uh, also, I have calculated the delta mu uh, from uh, this well-known uh, expression. And uh, I have calculated the Lewis factor and delta G according to this relation by substituting uh, them inside the classical nucleation to the expression for a steady state nucleation to, uh, uh, rate, we can uh, calculate the uh, J. This procedure, uh, I have repeated this procedure 
for six different cluster size uh, and uh, I have calculated the uh, nucleation rate uh, for uh, these uh, seed uh, uh, sizes, different uh, seed sizes. And in this figure, you can see uh, the J as a function of uh, escape temperature. Um, also, uh, in this figure, you can see the uh, number of atoms inside the seed as a function of temperature. Uh, you can see that uh, this number uh, uh, reduced uh, very rapidly by reducing temperature. And in the inset, uh, inset of a uh, figure, you can see the radius uh, of seed as a function of supercooling. And um, after uh, determining uh, the nucleation rate at uh, some point uh, here for six point, we can uh, extrapolate, we can use the classical nucleation theory and extrapolate it to find the nucleation rate in the deep supercooling uh, where the uh, where the measurement of nucleation rate was difficult. Uh, but uh, how can uh, uh, one uh, how one can uh, extrapolate this uh, J to the deep supercooling uh, needs uh, to uh, find the temperature dependence of uh, these three parameters: the N stars, the D star, and uh, D plus. For knowing the temperature dependence of uh, N, we first calculate the gamma interface of free energy according to this relation. And because the uh, gamma uh, has a very weak temperature dependence, a linear fit according to this relation to the values of gamma gives us the temperature dependence of gamma. Then, uh, by substituting again the uh, gamma T inside this relation, we can find the temperature dependence of N star. The z uh, the z factor is uh, easy for uh, the um, temperature dependence of uh, it is easy to find. Uh, and uh, to obtain the temperature dependence of attachment rate, we use this classical nucleation theory relation that uh, relates the D plus to the uh, effective diffusion coefficient of uh, supercooled liquid at each temperature. And uh, for, uh, at each temperature, uh, we have uh, obtained the dt uh, from the mean square displacement via Einstein's equation. Um, equation. Here, the lambda is uh, the distance traveled by the particle in the vicinity of the cluster to attach to the cluster surface and has the same order of magnitude as the unit cell uh, of the crystal of zinc selenide. About, uh, in the case of zinc selenide, lambda is 5.6 uh, angstrom. Knowing the temperature dependence of these three parameters, we can find the temperature dependence of J and extrapolate it to the uh, deep supercooling. The red dashed line here shows this extrapolation. We also here, um, uh, the, uh, also in this figure, the red dashed line shows the extrapolation of N star in the deep supercooling and uh, R star also. But uh, uh, the question that arises here is that how accurate are the J uh, and N uh, at deep supercooling predicted by seeding method? Uh, to answer this question, we should compare this result, this dash line, the, this result, uh, with data obtained from, uh, for example, from experiment, uh, experiments or, or um, calculated uh, by using other methods. In the case of zinc selenide, we do not have access to this uh, new uh, experimental data because there is no experimental data for J. Uh, so, but, uh, for example, in the case of uh, water or uh, uh, sodium chloride, uh, because the experimental data uh, uh, exists, um, the uh, result of seeding methods uh, are compared with those experimental data. But uh, as I have uh, explained before, the uh, zinc selenide, uh, 
shows a uh, spontaneous nucleation uh, in the deep supercoolings. So uh, this um, spontaneous nucleation here, this is a spontaneous nucleation which occurs uh, during the cooling path, uh, provides us a great opportunity uh, to uh, find J uh, by using the mean lifetime method. Uh, according to this method, the J is equal to 1 over uh, nucleation time cross the volume of the, uh, of the simulation box. And uh, when uh, uh, we calculate uh, the, uh, the J uh, uh, for um, five, uh, for four temperatures here, you can see the the red uh, circles shows the nucleation rate calculated uh, via mean lifetime method. In this figure, you can see uh, how good uh, the uh, Classical nucleation rate uh, can predict uh, these uh, four uh, red points. Uh, the difference between these uh, the red points and the dashed uh, red line is very uh, small. Is uh, they don't uh, they only differs in uh, one order of uh, magnitude. And uh, after determining the nucleation rate at each temperatures. Uh, we calculate the value of gamma um, uh, by uh, direct substitution of J uh, melting point, lambda diffusion coefficient, and delta mu into this uh, classical nucleation theory expression, and uh, we uh, found the uh, gamma. Uh, and uh, in figure, you can see the uh, gamma obtained from mean lifetime method in the spontaneous nucleation region uh, by uh, red uh, circles. And uh, from gamma, we can uh, find the R star, uh, the size of the uh, critical nucleus in deep supercooling. And from R star, uh, one can find the N star. Uh, I have uh, this, I have uh, displayed the R star and N star by uh, green circles in this uh, figure. Uh, you can see um, that the classical nucleation theory uh, can uh, very good predict uh, these values, um, and uh, this, uh, they are in good uh, agreement. So uh, the so the data we have obtained from the extrapolation of seeding method to deep supercooling uh, corroborate uh, with the uh, result of the mean lifetime method for uh, R star, N star, and uh, for a steady state nucleation rate also. To uh, sum up uh, the talk, First of all, we obtain the nucleation time, the relaxation time, also for in a, uh, from self-intermediate scattering function and from viscosity. Uh, we show that uh, the viscosity is not a good uh, choice uh, for uh, calculating the relaxation time. And uh, for all the supercooling regime, the tau eta was uh, lower than the tau r. And uh, this result confirms a recent uh, molecular dynamic simulation of barium sulfide and also experimental uh, result uh, for uh, two uh, commercial glasses. Also, uh, we have calculated, uh, we have determined the kinetic spinoza temperature, and uh, we have uh, shown that this uh, temperature is higher than the Cosman temperature, and so the Cosman paradox does not occur in the case of zinc selenide and uh, also um, and also we uh, have uh, calculated um, sorry in the temperature range above and uh, somehow below the kinetic spinodal uh, temperature um, the crystal nucleation dynamics in the supercooled liquid uh, should be affected by a structural re relaxation and um, this interface of relaxation on nucleation 
information is not at risk by the current nucleation models, but should be taken into account to properly analyze the nucleation rate. This uh, result corroborates recent theoretical prediction and experimental result for lithium disilicate and about this uh, commercial glass. We also obtain the nucleation rate in two regions, in, su uh, in a shallow supercooling by a uh, seeding method and in deep supercooling uh, by uh, using the uh, mean lifetime method. And we have showed that uh, how uh, the results of the seeding method, uh, how the extrapolation of the seeding uh, of uh, J and a star and R star extrapolated from the data obtained from see the nucleation into the deep supercooling region, uh, region can collaborate uh, with uh, the result of the uh, the result of the J and SR and uh, RSR obtained from mean lifetime method. Uh, and this uh, result of uh, zinc selenide also collaborate uh, with previous uh, molecular dynamic simulation for Leonard Jones, water, silicate, and uh, reinforce the validity of the uh, classical nucleation uh, theory. Thank you so much for your attention. I'm sorry if uh, my uh, uh, PowerPoint uh, has some problems during showing the video. Yes. Okay. Anybody has any Okay, uh, thank you very much. I hope this presentation uh, could be uh, helpful for uh, students, for your students. Thank you, Leila. Uh, Ramon, uh, what was the question of Ramon? Sim, é, thank you very much, Leila. É, é, any question? Alguém tem alguma, alguma pergunta, algum comentário? Por favor. Ok, maybe I, I can ask a question about... Uh, Leila, well, you don't mention about pressure because this phase transition or, or, or stress behavior in, as a function of temperature. We we'll speculate about uh, uh, the whole of pressure in this process. Well, the pressure is uh, atmosphere uh, pressure. The pressure uh, was zero. Okay. You don't take in account uh, any effect of... No, no. I didn't take into account the effect of pressure, uh, and uh, we just uh, took the pressure zero, zero atoms. And there is no data at all to compare with your simulation. Maybe frustrating, <laughs> frustrating to. <laughs> no, there is no experimental result. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe I may ask another question, Ramon. Oh, sorry, uh, Reza, what's the thing? I, I think Professor Oria uh, still have one more question. Yes? Yep. Um, Please. It's uh, in your... Uh, uh, in your model, the, the last part you mentioned about the how you take in account the diffusion and you use um, a normal distribution, normal diffusion. You, you so you call Einstein diffusion. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. Okay. For uh, um, you want to know how uh, I have calculated the diffusion coefficient. Uh, yes, we can talk about, but my my point is, as I have worked in using different kind of uh, diffusion mm -hmm. mechanism. I, uh, yes, uh, there are different uh, kind of mechanism for calculating diffusion coefficient, uh, but here I have used the mean square displacement. Uh, 
but there are some others. Uh, uh, also, I have forgotten to tell that uh, all the simulation uh, was done by uh, using the LAMPS uh, package. And uh, in the LAMPS, uh, you can uh, find different methods for calculating the diffusion coefficient. I see. Okay. Thank you very much, Leila. Tessa, você tem algum comentário? Sim, sim. In fact, I had uh, some questions. Uh, once you you already explained about the software which you are using for the simulations. It's uh, LAMS. LAMS. Yes. Okay. Or LAMS. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, when when you are using uh, 37,000 particles in your simulation. Does it uh, took a long time to have the results? No, because uh, we are using the GPU here, and uh, uh, our cluster is very powerful. <laughs> I know. Okay. Then, it doesn't then, take a lot of time. Very good, very good. And uh, um, another, another question that I noted here, and uh, it was about the uh, comparison with the experimental observations. But you already answered this question also. But I have one. Uh, so one observation: if if somebody uh, tried to to nucleate this uh, zinc selenide uh, in the nanoparticle form, uh, then uh, the only way to to see the nucleation rate and the particle size is to do some microscopy, isn't it? Uh, to do some uh, to insert some microscopic seeds. Me? I mean, do some uh, some microscopy to observe the size of particles and the, and to see how much it is uh, nucleated and how, how is the behavior. Which which uh, I know that is it maybe is not in your in your area. Uh, yes, my, uh, which, because which I method, do not have any uh, uh, experience in experimental me uh, methods that uh, people use uh, mm -hmm. for calculating the uh, nucleation rate. But my uh, supervisor, Professor Zanto, <laughs> knows it very better than me. <laughs> if you want, I can ask him. I, I think we, we can work on that and to see if we can... Uh, uh, reproduce your simulated results in an experimental work yes it will, uh, be and, and only one more question that i had uh, that you are using this uh, methodology for the zinc selenide which mm -hmm. type of which type of the particles uh, we can we can study with this uh, theoretical method is is it possible to to run uh, the same simulation for the metallic nanoparticles? For metallic uh, nanoparticles, yes, also, uh, yes, we can uh, do it. Also, um, the seeding method uh, also uh, was studied in the, for example, germanium and in nickel mm -hmm. uh, and also in uh, copper. Right. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the kinetic spinodal temperature that we have determined in, uh, in the case of zinc selenide is very uh, new, uh, new uh, idea. Like, uh, and uh, this kinetic spinodal temperature uh, is uh, determined in a few materials. Uh, only in, uh, I think, only in five materials. And uh, uh, but we are trying to. Uh, to uh, expand uh, these to other materials to see what happened. For example, uh, here the uh, kinetic spinodal temperature in the case of zinc selenide is above the glass transition. But uh, the question is that uh, what will happen if the uh, supercooled liquid enters to the glassy state first? And after that, what happened for it? Is, it a, uh, is the crystallization after uh, entering the glass transition uh, occurs or not. It depends on the um, uh, uh, kinetic spinodal temperature. Uh, if this temperature is above the glass transition temperature or below the glass transition temperature. 
Okay. And also the effect of cooling rate. Uh, what is the effect of cooling rate on uh, kinetic spinodal temperature? These um, questions are um, those that we are uh, trying to find a solution and uh, we are trying to simulate more systems uh, with different cooling rates uh, to um, uh, to find an uh, answer for these kind of questions that are very new. Great, thank you very much. No, another question? Hesa, you can make the final consideration of the, the presentation. Yes, later. Sure, Congratulations. Sure for the presentation. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, Leo, thank you very much for your presentation and uh, for your time uh, to be here present for us about your uh, research results. And uh, we would be very happy to be in touch with you and make a new bridge between uh, our uh, academic unit and your institution and perhaps uh, uh, we have here students and uh, professors that working in the glassy materials and nanoparticles and perhaps uh, uh, joining this experimental vision and uh, yeah. theoretical methods uh, will have uh, good uh, good vision for the better research and for uh, providing uh, new information uh, to add up in the uh, uh, in the academic research, and uh, 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 that's all. Uh, thank you, anyone. Thank you, uh, thank you, guys, for the participation in the colloquium. Uh, if anybody has come, uh, some comments, we are here. If not, we can. Uh, uh, close the session of the today. É. Reza, vamos agradecer a prof, professora Luiz. Vamos. É, seria bom a todo mundo. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Eu vou parar agora a apresentação e só para concluir. É, Toda segunda-feira a gente começa com o nosso ciclo de palestras no programa de pós-graduação. Por favor, eu só peço a todos os que foram a participar tentar entrar no horário até quatro horas para evitar, eh, quando a gente esteja gravando, eh, ter que interromper aí qualquer eh, a, a apresentação. Não?